Hello, and welcome to For Further Review. Today I have two special guests. I have Catherine Gordon, who is the grant writer for our extended school program, and I have Candy Powers, who is the Black Fox site director for the extended school program. So thank you, ladies, for being here. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Catherine, tell us about your day. What's, what's the life like of a grant writer? The life of a grant writer, well, it involves a great deal of research. And whether that is based on finding philanthropic organizations that you can apply for grants for or researching student needs based on social situations and academic situations at schools. So there's a lot of research on that. And then there's the reporting that has to be done and the typical paperwork. But the beauty of it is coming up and creating programs that are going to benefit students. That's the part that I love. Could you talk a little bit about some of those programs, some of the things that we have in the extended school program that would not be there if it weren't for the grants? Well, we currently have two grants that function in providing those programs. One is the 21st Century Community Learning Center grant, and that grant is provided through the federal government as a block grant to the states. And that grant is located at Bradley, Case and Lane, Hopgood, and the Mitchell Nielsen Schools. And it provides homework assistance, it provides small group tutoring, enrichment time, busing services home at the end of the day. And we also have been able to implement some new programs that are really exciting. In particular, one's called the Art of Stepping. And this program is teaching step dance to our students using algebraic and geometric practices. And the founder of this program, Jessica Saul, she was a 2010 Presidential Fitness Award winner. Wow. Sounds exciting. It is very exciting. Yeah. Although I'm trying to figure out the algebraic and geometric concepts to dance, but they're, they're bound to be there, I'm sure. They are. <laughs> I have every faith in that. <laughs> Candy, could you talk us a little bit about what you do? Now, I know that you're a phenomenal teacher at Black Fox, and well, that just goes without saying. But you also, I'm, I'm always seeing you whenever we have professional development. You're always there, but you also are the site director. So can you... Tell me a little bit about the difference in what you do during the day and being a site director in the afternoon. Sure. Um, well, during the day, obviously, I'm, I'm teaching all day. I teach fifth grade. Um, so we do a lot of math, a lot of reading, a lot of science, a lot of social studies. And, and I do a lot of um, professional development, um, not just for my classroom, but also to bring that to ESP, too, because I do wear the two hats um, every single day. Um, so I participate in anything that has to do with science. So if there's an opportunity, opportunity for me to go to um, Sci Girls training, I'll, I'll be there, or STEM training, I'll be there. Um, I can bring that back to my classroom, and then I can also teach my staff and encourage them to use that in our after-school program as well. Good. Could you tell me a little bit about the Psy Girls? And I can go with either one of you on this one, but that term intrigues me, and I know that I was able to see a little bit of that in action at, at MTSU one Saturday. But talk to us about what Psy Girls looks like when you bring it back to the school. What does that look like with our students? Well, right now we, we do have a Psy Girls uh, enrichment class in ESP, so it's a class that we opened up um, for interested girls to join. Um, we kind of had to recruit them at first, uh, but once the girls came to the first class, they told their friends and more girls joined, wanted to be a part of it. Um, so it's basically just um, giving girls the opportunity to participate in STEM activities and and. For those that don't know the term STEM, that's science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, girls don't typically participate in those kinds of activities, so we like to really push it, push them towards that and have uh, lots more female engineers in the world um, and hopefully inspire our girls at Black Fox and in our other schools that are going to be participating with the Psy Girls classes. Uh, we did go to a training. It is a um, actually a television show um, from it's it's I'll, I'll turn it over to Catherine here because she's really schooled on this topic. We just were notified last week that we have received a an additional grant 
one-time supplemental, and the, this grant I uh, particularly tailored to the STEM program. So we are going to be able to provide a scientist in residence for three days at each one of the sites that were identified under this standard. And so the gentleman that uh, we will be using, he is the Hooked on Science guy, and his name is Jason Lindsay. And he does a television show that is based out of Paducah, Kentucky, and is a meteorologist and a climatologist. And he actually, it's just amazing what the man does. I saw him at a conference I attended and was enraptured. I could not leave the room. And I thought, you know, if as an adult, if I'm this excited about this, what will children feel? And so we worked really hard to get him down here to do a professional development for all of our schools. And then we did some site visits. We stopped by Black Fox for one of them. And after that, we were notified that we received the grant funds so that we can have our scientists in residence. Great. Tell me um, some other things that are happening as far as science in, in after school. Well, we always have the opportunities for the students to participate in our enrichment programs. And a lot of those enrichment programs, to, to a parent, may not sound very scientific. But, for instance, when you have the Lego Builders class, any time a child is sitting there and using a hands-on experiential learning to build something, in particular, if we have the Legos laid out and they are building a car, they're using an engineering process to do that because they are having to visualize what the outcome is before they're doing it. They're having to judge the width. They're having to judge the height. They're having to look a force and function. So they're learning through play. And for a child, that is oftentimes, well, most every time, the best methodology for learning. So we do a lot of that in our after-school programs. Good. Candy, what's your favorite part of ESP? Um. Probably right now, our gardening program. Uh, we were able to get two raised beds uh, last year, thanks to our wonderful maintenance department and Mr. Wilford, um, who donated some supplies for us. So we have two uh, really large raised beds, and we are currently growing the seeds uh, in my classroom under grow lights. And I also recently acquired a tower garden, which is a really cool thing because it doesn't use soil. It uses just water and air to grow the plants, and we add the nutrients that the plants would normally get from the soil we add in liquid form to the water. Um, and it's in this giant container um, that pumps the water up to the top of the container, and then the water flows back down over the plants. It's uh, really beautiful, and right now our plants are doing really well in it. The kids are excited. Every time somebody walks by my classroom, um, they think it's anything from a stand-up tanning bed to they, they don't know what it is from the door because it has grow lights all the way around it. So it's a really large uh, piece of equipment. Uh, we will be able to push it out when the weather gets warmer to push it outside during the day so it can get some natural sunlight. But um, that's probably my favorite part right now is uh, getting into the gardening. So we're just waiting on the warm weather so we can get our plants in the ground. And I know that there are other sites, I think, that are also engaging in gardening, which is really, really exciting. Um, Catherine, talk to us a little bit about some of the activities. What does summer look like in the ESP program? And, Candy, you may want to feed into this, too. But oh, definitely. Tell us about the summer, because that is coming up despite the weather that we're having right now. Yes. Well, parents, you will be receiving in your child's backpack flyers that are tailored to each one of your school's specific programs for summer. And the pr programs being offered are truly fantastic. Not just recreational fun, but also educational recreational fun. But don't tell the children that. Some of the trips they're going to take include the Huntsville Space and Science Museum, the Frist Museum for the Arts. They're going to be out and about and exploring and doing. They're going to participate in extended gardening activities. They have so much going on that it, it will keep them very, very busy. And the best part about it is that when they're engaged, they learn. 
and that's what we want for them is to have fun engagement to learn. Catherine, how can parents get in touch with you if they want to learn more about Do they need to call the separate schools or can they call the central office? What would be the easiest way for parents? Either to one. Touch? If you need to call and get information before 11 a.m. in the mornings, call central office. And the site directors are on site from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. Okay. And the central office number is? 893-2313. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Candy, before we leave, I do have a question because you are a terrific teacher. Thank you. When you think about good teachers, what are the qualities that make a good teacher? Um, for me, um, hard work. Um, I work really hard every day. Uh, I walk in the classroom and I am teaching and engaging students all day long. And when I see teachers do that, um, I think they're pretty awesome. It's a, it's a pretty tough thing to do to, to go from eight o'clock in the morning till three o'clock in the afternoon nonstop with kids. Um, so, when I look around at teachers that I consider to be wonderful and awesome and great, they are all extremely hardworking. Um, and patience, a great deal of patience as well. And willing to learn and change and grow. Um, not kind of get stuck in a rut and do the same thing. My, my lessons change every single year. I've never used the same lesson plan book. Um, and I, I'd say that that's true for every teacher I know. Um, everyone that I know is always constantly trying to change and improve and learn new ways to present information to, to children. Good. Catherine, what's your vision for ESP? ESP is growing, and by growing I mean that ESP is it's changing, and it is tooling itself to provide specific needs for specific children at specific sites because not every child is the same and we don't ever want to treat any child as if they are exactly the same. They have unique needs. With that being said, we are going to be creating programs that allow children to explore their areas of interest. We are going to create programs that help children who are possibly struggling and need that extra time with a teacher to understand what they're doing in the regular day, but present it in a different method in the afternoon. Sometimes students don't necessarily learn in a traditional method. I had a young man one time who um, could not understand double-digit multiplication, and so I took the time to create a movement-based activity because he was, he was very athletic, and he understood foot drills. And so I put double-digit multiplication into a foot drill. After that, he understood it. So I think in the future that's, that's where we're going to go. We're really working towards creating those opportunities for the children because not only do they need exposure, but they need practice and they need the relationships that we provide. Relationships are very important for children because they have to feel safe. And once they feel safe, they're going to learn and they're going to have fun and they're going to be engaged. Thank you. Candy, the last question is yours. What's your vision for Murfreesboro City Schools? Wow. Um, I just see Murfreesboro City Schools in the future. Um, I mean, I already personally think we are the best school district in the state of Tennessee, possibly across the nation. Um, but I just, I only see, I see us getting better and better and our teachers um, improving and growing more and bringing more STEM-related activities into our classrooms. Um, you know, moving to the Common Core um, really lends itself to that. Um, I, just, I, see, I just see continuous growth for Murfreesboro City Schools and um, am so excited to be part of Murfreesboro City Schools and hope to be for another 15 or 20 years. Well, and we hope you are too. <laughs> thank you two ladies very much for what you do for our children. And thank you very much for your support of Murfreesboro City Schools.